So it's important to think about what a graph can give you in physics and uh, one of our go-to's as far as information that we can get off of that is looking at the area under the curve. When we say area under the curve we mean shading in the area uh, from the actual graph, the function, which is your red line in this case, back down to the x-axis. And just to show you a couple different variations of that, if I had a velocity graph that had a negative range to it and my graph was actually like this this would show something going at a constant negative velocity so something maybe traveling back towards the origin uh, for several seconds and then slowing down getting smaller and smaller in velocity over time well the area under, under the curve in this case would still be shaded from the graph here back to the x-axis and so I'll just kind of show you what that would look like um, shading that in the area would be this shape here for this graph um, back up to this graph, a graph we've seen um, more often that area under the curve would just be a simple triangle shape like that so what does the area really give us? if we wrote a formula for the area of this triangle here uh, we got a base here, we got a height here, and so the formula for any triangle, right triangle, would just be area equals one half base times height. Well, if we swap out the actual values we have, we have velocity, uh, you know, let's say for a height value, and time for a base value, and so what our equation would look like would be um, something, and we're, that's what we're solving for. What is that something? Equals one half velocity values times time values, just taking a base times a height. Well, then we start to think, okay, well, what does taking a velocity multiplying by a time actually give you? We can look to the units to do that. Velocity is measured in meters per second. Time values are measured in seconds. And if I were to multiply that out, my seconds would cancel, and that would just give me a meter on the right side of the equation. That means that my units for this side of the equation also have to be meters. So I got meters on both sides of the equation. Um, then you know it's a true statement. So I'm thinking, all right, what is measured in meters then? That is the concept of position change or displacement. So the displacement measured in meters is equal to this area under the curve for this velocity graph. Now this only works if it's a uh, velocity time graph. That area only gives you displacement if you have velocity and time because of the way that we multiply those two values together. All right, we're going to practice. Let's say you come across a graph that has velocity versus time and the object apparently goes from zero velocity here when time is zero up to about 10 meters per second. If we trace that graph across, we're going 10 meters per second after eight seconds of traveling. And so the question is, is how far how far does the object go? And statements like how far or how much distance does it travel or what's the displacement of the object, um, those are all referring to the same thing. They want to know how many meters did it actually travel during that time period. So when we ask that, we think, how can I get the distance traveled? That's the concept of the area under this curve. Because when I take velocity times time, I'm going to get a position. So we make it a simple triangle, that's one half times 10 meters per second uh, times 8 seconds. My seconds cancel out and I got 80 times one half or around 40 meters. So this object has traveled 40 meters in that 8 seconds. What if we have a more complicated graph that has negative velocities and positive velocities? Like, for instance, this graph starts here at negative 4 meters per second, something um, maybe traveling toward the origin at a certain speed, and that value is slowing down. You're going toward the origin, but getting slower and slower and slower until you eventually are going at 0 meters per second. But then you start transitioning, you go further and further away from the origin, faster and faster and faster. You see these velocity values, if you trace them across, are getting larger and larger. So this object slows down, 
then switches direction and speeds back up. Well, how do you know how far it's gone uh, with all this change going on in the problem? But we still rely on our method of area under the curve. When I shade in area under the curve, when I'm in the negative axis, I go back to the uh, the x-axis and when I'm above I go back down to the x-axis and in this case um, solving for area of the curve uh, I'd have one half base times height for this triangle one half base times height for this triangle and um, they end up actually being the same amount the way that I made this so I would have one half negative four times 5 and up here I'd have 1 half positive 4 times 5 and so multiplying across I get 20 times 1 half or 10 meters of displacement on this triangle and I get a negative 10 meters of displacement on this triangle well total then for this entire 10 seconds I have to add the two together. I have to sum them together. So I take my negative displacement, negative 10, plus my positive displacement of positive 10 meters, and I get as a total zero meters of displacement. So this object hasn't actually gone anywhere uh, from start to finish as far as displacement is concerned. It went toward the origin, then it went back away from the origin, but it landed uh, in the same spot that it started because this total displacement, this negative and this positive, add up to zero.